and welcome to the Legends of the Wind podcast. I'm Jury Shank, your host tonight. Thank you for joining us. It's great to have you here. Um, I have a guest in studio this time. This is Jeanette Titmus. Jeanette, thanks for coming today. Thank you. I, I will enjoy this, I'm sure. <laughs> That's great. So for those of you who are new, I uh, have never seen uh, prophetic storytelling before, I'd like to kind of explain a little bit about what it means to become a legend and what a prophetic story is. Per, to become a legend is like kind of like on a map. It's not that you're super famous or you're a rock star or a politician or a movie star. Legends serve a purpose. And on a map, they have ideas or icons that tell you what things are, what they represent. And that way, when you're in a location, you can figure out where you are on the map and where you're going to go. A prophetic story helps someone know their identity and their destiny, gives them a sense of who they are and their worth and their love and their encouragement, and it points them to their future. In that sense, it serves as a legend as well. This story gives them that purpose. And so it's also different than a prophetic word. So in church or a conference setting, someone will be ministering and talking to someone prophetically in like a prayer time. This is not that. This is a story. This is a creative work of art. It's kind of like painting a portrait of someone, but in story form. And yet the story is, has revelations in it that's given by Holy Spirit. And they contain hidden treasures and ideas that only the guests would know that I wouldn't. And the whole, I, then we get to learn and unpack them and discover the hidden treasures in them. And that's what we're going to do tonight with Jeanette. So uh, Mike Smith says hello to you and I. Good to see you, Mike. Thanks so much for joining us again. And uh, Kylie and Alicia are upstairs with Gail. So Jeanette, welcome. Thank you. So would you mind introducing yourself to the audience and kind of explain a little bit about who you are and maybe how you came about getting a story? My uh, husband had used to work for Amico and we were transferred around a lot. But then one day the company said, your job will be in Thermopolis and that's where your paycheck will be. And so that's where we begin to get acquainted with our people mm -hmm. and our friends. And uh, so that's kind of where I got started. What year did that happen? In 76. Wow, 76. It's mm -hmm. a while. It's, it's been a while. the year I was born. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> so tell me, you, uh, how did you... So someone sponsored Jeanetta's story for her as a gift. Could you explain to the audience about what you've seen me do with others with the prophetic story? I would love to. Uh, he had called a gal forward because he wanted to share her story with us. And I listened intently because I knew it was something I hadn't heard before. And I enjoyed every minute of it. Mm -hmm. Because you kind of dig in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was good to me. I enjoyed it. I heard every word of it. And uh, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> not a bad thing. Thank you. And he's, he's on the level with it, and he isn't trying to pull anything. No. It's, it was, I enjoyed it. Wow. I did. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Jeanette. Great. So I uh, wanted to bless Jeanette with her story. And so um, I'm really curious because um, I, I, that was the only time Jeanette has seen me in action. She hasn't seen the podcast. She's brand new in this studio. And so I'm wanting to help her cut up to speed along with you about how to receive a prophetic story. So a prophetic story is a revelation, and it's meant to be understood symbolically, not literally. Mm -hmm. It's not meant to be understood literally. And it's kind of like dream language and using dream interpretation to kind of unpack the hidden treasures. Now, um, so Jeanette, you also, I want to let you know, you have power in this moment. You have a choice. Okay. You can say, yes, I do receive this prophetic story, or no, I do not. Or you may need to 
chew on the story and come back and revisit it and find out if there's anything else that God's showing you in it, okay? Yes. So that's yes. part of the process. Okay. And then, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to read the story to Jeanette, and we're going to have a time of interpretation afterward where we get to unpack the hidden treasures, and then we're going to learn from Jeanette what God's showing her in her story. And the whole point is to find the application. Like, what does it mean for her? What are you going to do with this? What is the encouragement? What is the strength? What is the hope that's being brought to you? Does that sound good? Sounds like a winner to me. <laughs> Great. Good. Well, um, it's time for your story. Are you ready? Okay. Let's oh, go. Very good. Everybody, thank you so much. If you like what we're doing here, please hit the subscribe button, like this video, share this out with those who are, are in your circle of friends and relationship. Let people know what we're doing and let them see uh, the power of prophetic story. All right, here we go. Out with the old, in with the new. The thrift shop was full of old clothes hanging on crowded racks layered in multiple rows. Their prices were very cheap and the items were in various levels of condition and organized by different sizes. The clothes came from different periods of time, only separated by the men's and women's sections. Jeanette walked up and down searching for the right items that would fit her. It was like a walk through time for Jeanette. She saw different styles and fashions from the periods of her life, from being a teenager to an adult and then to her later years. Jeanette felt the emotions and saw the images from her past as she flipped through the hangers. There were some mini skirts and go-go pants, some polyester long sleeve blouses, various pants and jackets that matched for the wedding season, and on and on. There were also some country jeans and shirts that reminded her of hard work and getting dirty. All these different pieces fill her mind with various identities and times of the soul. Jeanette came to a section of dark clothing, ones that you would wear at a funeral. The pain of loss filled Jeanette's heart as she recalled being at ceremonies for those she loved and still missed to this day, but they are now only memories. This pain in her soul resurfaced, and Jeanette could remember the smells and feelings of the ones close to her. In the midst of this grief, a lie appeared in her mind. It kept saying over the years, always alone. This lie annoyed her, and she tried to shake it off as if it were a hand stuck to fly paper. The more effort she used to push it away, the greater its stickiness held on to her. Jeanette did not know what to do about this painful declaration. Even her circumstances seemed to shout it out day after day and year after year. She thought she needed to get a life and just forget about it. Jeanette walked up and down the aisle of the, of the thrift store looking at other clothes. Perhaps she could find an item for someone else as a gift. But Jeanette saw that the quality of this store was low and not appealing. Jeanette had visited countless other thrift shops before, and it was this one in particular that many recommended as being the best. This contradiction made Jeanette wonder why everyone loved it here. Was there something she was missing? Feeling hopeless and lost, Jeanette stopped shifting through the old clothes. The process was too overwhelming and time-consuming. The memories that kept popping up were not pleasant. Jeanette wanted to make a change. Over the intercom, one of the employees in the store turned on some music. It was a pop song from the 1970s that lit up Jeanette's soul. Positive memories and feelings lifted her heart. The instruments and singing changed the atmosphere. New life resonated through the building, and Jeanette was in the center of it all. She paused and took in the flood of new emotions. The song reminded her of her family and all their wonderful adventures. One memory was a family reunion when all the children ran around playing while the adults sat down to drink beer, soda, or lemonade. The collection of all the cousins and generations made Jeanette feel whole and sound of soul. This sense of belonging is what she always needed. The lie of loneliness would be far away from her heart and she couldn't hear it shouting. Jeanette needed a new reunion. She had closed her eyes while the song ended, and with a smile on her face, Jeanette opened her eyes and came back to reality in the thrift shop. 
But to her surprise, she saw a large yellow lion with a huge mane walking down the aisle in front of her. <laughs> this remarkable image shocked her, and fear struck her heart as she gasped. Golden light poured down on the lion, who was about 30 feet away, at the far end of the row. The other people in the building seemed to fade away into the shadows. They took no notice of this supernatural event. With each step of the lion, he came closer, and the ground rumbled under his feet. Jeanette, with wi eyes wide open, ambled backwards. The lion looked straight into her heart. Jeanette backed into a mannequin and knocked it over. The body came crashing down to the floor, making a loud noise. All the pieces of the dummy broke apart. Jeanette rushed down, trying to put together the mannequin as fast as she could, all while watching the lion making his way to her. In a panic, Jeanette attached the parts and limbs all the wrong way. It was a strange configuration. A hand was attached to a shoulder, an arm was attached to a hip, a foot was attached to the neck. <laughs> Jeanette was so afraid she didn't know what she was doing. The lion came near and looked up at the mannequin. What have you created, Jeanette? asked the lion with a strong, low voice. Jeanette was amazed that this lion was able to talk. She looked up and down at the body and the lion. Jeanette replied, Ah, I have no idea. I was afraid and in a hurry. You speak correctly, said the lion. What do you desire here in this thrift store? Jeanette looked up and saw the infinite number of rows and all the clothes, times in history, styles, painful memories, and the good ones. She shook her head at the overwhelming nature of the place. Jeanette replied, I thought I would find something cheap to wear, but actually, I want something new. Your memories speak pain to you, don't they? asked the lion. Jeanette couldn't answer. She just nodded her head as tears came to her eyes. Do you think you can find something new here? asked the lion. Everyone said this was the best store, the best thrift store in the world. Do you find new things in a thrift store? asked the lion with a curious voice. I don't know, replied Jeanette as she scanned the racks of clothing. She turned to the lion and with surprise she said, But you're new. I've never seen a lion in a thrift store. I have never even held a conversation with a talking lion at that, laughed Jeanette. <laughs> who do you think I am? asked the lion, with who looked closer into Jeanette's eyes. The lion seemed to smile. He said with a chuckle, come with me. The lion turned around in the aisle, and Jeanette followed him. As they walked, the rows of clothing racks seemed to extend off into infinity, and the dusty, dim light of the thrift store shifted into a bright white light. The music on the intercom became lighter in tone, and the positive vibrations of sound filled the air. Jeanette noticed that the old was becoming new. The clothing on the racks shifted from tattered used shirts, blouses, pants, and such to become ones of fine linen and silk made of variety of colors and styles. All these new items of clothes and their quality surprised Jeanette. In fact, a fresh smell came to Jeanette's nostrils. No longer was there a dungy, dusty smell. Now there was the refreshing aroma of delight, like the air after the rain. The lion stopped walking and turned around. Jeanette and the beast came to the end of an infinite row of clothing. The racks of new clothes hung on each side of the row. On the left was a matching top and bottom made of the highest quality cotton, perfect for summer. On the right was a wool sweater that was knitted beautifully in a light weave, perfect for winter. You have a choice. Of all the clothing here in this space, you may take what you desire. All the items will fit you perfectly, said the lion. Jeanette touched the clothing and looked them over carefully. She pulled some and held them to her body, trying to see what they would look like. I need a mirror, said Jeanette. Turn around, said the lion. The woman was a little startled as she turned to look behind her. There was a tall golden mirror that showed Jeanette's reflection in it. 
To her surprise, she wasn't her older age, but in her 30s and full of life. The image showed her wearing the clothing, and a bright smile appeared on her face. Jeanette felt beautiful, and a joyful youth filled her heart. This is wonderful, cried out Jeanette. How did you know this would be mine? Your heart is very important to me, Jeanette. It is the pain in your soul that I seek to restore. It is your identity I wish to reveal to you. Do you like what you see? Jeanette turned to the lion and hugged him, kissing him on top of his bushy mane. You are my king, said the lady. Take whatever clothing you like. You have no limits here, said the lion. Jeanette picked a variety of items of clothing and held on to them all. She asked, uh, how, how much are these? Priceless. I've already paid. These are my gifts to you, said the lion. Jeanette carefully folded all the clothes and placed them in a wicker basket with wheels. The lion led Jeanette out into a vast grassy field in the golden sunlight with pillowy clouds that dotted the sky. They walked to the horizon and disappeared off into the distance. Jeanette wore the clothes and fell whole again. At the next reunion, all of her family members took great delight in her apparel. There was no jealousy. There was no awkwardness or anger. The lion healed Jeanette's heart and the pains in her soul faded away. Jeanette helped her other members meet the lion and receive their new clothes as well. The brokenness and division, the anger and bitterness in all these members became healed and restored. Light and love filled their eyes and hearts. All the old things in Jeanette's life turned around and became new. Inceptio. Wow. What's hitting you, hon? <laughs> that is not unusual for me. You hit right on. Really? <laughs> Praise God. In some ways, you sure did. Tell me about it. What ways? Well, quite often, if I find something, which I do, I go a lot to the little shops. Mm -hmm. And if I see something that needs to be repaired mm -hmm. for someone, then I get busy and repair it. Mm. And some of the things that you were saying there is like, how did he know? <laughs> I'm serious. Wow. Because that that's part of my life. I mm. enjoy that. It makes me feel happy. Mm. Good makes me feel happy and it makes me feel like I'm doing something for someone else. Mm. And that's very important to me. Wow. Is your love language giving gifts? Is that something that you do for expressing to others? Uh, more in the clothing line. Okay. <laughs> more in the clothing line. I have things that I go down to the shop, mm -hmm. the secondhand shop, and I think, hmm. Oh, Something needs to be done to that outfit. So I take it home and do it. Wow. Amazing. It's, yes. Yeah. So just so everybody knows, I, I don't really know Jeanette. I know uh, I've been with her at church in different times. But I, I don't, did I ever interview you? Did no. you ever volunteer information? No. 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 It's all, no. it's all, <laughs> it's all the Lord, right? Yes. So, um. So we have some comments uh, in the chat. Um, um, Kylie says, I could do dream interpretation. Thank you, Kylie. Uh, Gail says, wow, an amazing story. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Wow. And Mike, if you're there, feel free, anybody in the chat, chime in, add your comments, ask questions for me or her. It doesn't matter. We'd love you to be part of our discussion. So, Jeanette... I mean, what is it in the story that really hit you the most in your heart? My biggest concern is that if something needs to be done for someone, clothing, for instance, because is all you have to do is to look at someone's outfit and know whether it's done right or not. Mm. And then to me, I immediately say, you know what needs to happen here? And sure enough, it, 
even if you change the sleeve mm -hmm. or if you change the length. Mm -hmm. And so and so would sure look nice in that. Mm. So you have that sense of yeah, image and style. I do. That's yeah, good. I, and and so when you've done that for people, like what are the results? Well, I'm not sure that sometimes they kind of look at me funny. I'm sure they wonder what where that ever came from. Mm -hmm. But I just it's something that I have always enjoyed doing. Mm -hmm. And when mom would have a, a something that needed to be mended or re redone, mm -hmm. then I'd say, here, let me finish it. Wow. Because it's something that I, I just have there. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have an eye, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An eye, that's mm -hmm. good. And these stories, there's like an eye as well, is seeing creativity. And do you find, I've found with other people who are like stylists, they can look at a person, a man or woman, mm -hmm. and they'll just go, I know exactly yes. that person's style. Yes. Is that something that yeah. you, you do? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's good. Uh -huh. Wow. So let's go into the story some details, okay? Okay. Um, so in dream language, um, clothing can represent identity. Mm -hmm. And in this particular mm -hmm. setting, uh, there's all sorts of identities, and all mm -hmm. it reminds you of the past. It reminds you of good mm -hmm. things, negative things, painful things, happy things. And so, um, when you are looking for something, did, do you ever feel that you're still searching in your own life, even to this day, about identity in some way? Years ago, we I didn't come from a healthy family. Mm -hmm. And um, so that often was a choice for me to make, to change the style that I would be wearing or even to help someone else know this would look better on you mm -hmm. than this would. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, was very limited to my clothing because there wasn't that finance Sure. And so I waited patiently. And then when I had an opportunity or even started work, mm -hmm. then I would oftentimes go buy what I thought this girl needed. Mm. This girl. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> so remember that these stories are symbolic. Mm -hmm. So while there's something in the natural mm -hmm. that really touched your heart, like mm -hmm. you doing clothing and you actually have a stylist ability, it's kind of an overlap of the reality mm -hmm. and then the then the hidden treasures. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to do is talk about some of those hidden treasures in addition to the reality that you are sharing. Um, so. What about when the lion showed up? What do you think about that moment in the story? And what do you think happened to you in the story? Well, I found a friend. <laughs> I found a friend. And he wasn't going to turn me away. Mm. He wanted to be my friend. For one thing. Yeah. There was this, the story talked about the lie. Do you remember that? always alone mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I was a lot mm -hmm. and so I think that probably even filled that gap for me mm. yeah and I, that lion is your friend right yeah, absolutely yeah. now I always wonder I, I don't know what to do with this part of the story but because I just saw it and I wrote it down as I ha happy but the lion's coming to you and you're afraid and you knock over the mannequin and you put, mm -hmm. put the mannequin mm -hmm. all back in mm -hmm. the weirdest mm -hmm. way. What would you say that means for your life in a symbolic sense? Well, sometimes we make messes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we make messes and they need to be corrected. But I'm not satisfied until that's been corrected. Mm. Uh, might have to go the extra mile. Mm -hmm. Might have to make some changes. Mm -hmm. But it can be done if you want to do it, if you're willing to do it. Mm. Sure, that thing may look bad, <laughs> but I hadn't planned on leaving it that way. Mm -hmm. Let's let's do something with that. I like that. 
you have to have a, a, a resolution mm -hmm. to the whole there thing. There you go. That's good. That's right. Wow. Um, and then um, we have some more comments. Thank you very much. Uh, Mike says, great story, very uplifting. And then Gail says, you're making small adjustments to others to close are just the outside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that um, you talked about just a moment ago about having to make things right. You know, we make messes. Mm -hmm. All of us, of course, we make messes, right? And then the lion comes and says, what did you want in this thrift store? Do you remember what the realization of what you really wanted was that you said to the lion? Do you remember that part? Well, I wanted something for me. Mm hmm And I, something new, right? And something new. Yes. Mm hmm And I knew that I could get help. Right. From that lion. <laughs> because that lion had a smile <laughs> that I couldn't resist, and I knew that lion was going to be my friend. Nice. Wow, I love yeah. it. Yeah. And and then it went and he changed. Like it was like the whole place shifted from mm -hmm. junky clothes mm -hmm. to the most beautiful clothes. Mm -hmm. I I think that um that's the promise. But see, we can do that to our own life. Mhm. Mm How so? Well, we don't need to be grumpy. We don't need to be dull. We don't need to hang our head. We don't have anything to be ashamed of. If I can fix it, let's get her done. I like it. That's beautiful. I like it. Let's, yeah. let's, let's do it that way. Wow. Wow. I love this. And I love her. her you got some spunk. You, you need to get some more spunk out. Everyone wants to see it. This is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you get to the end of the aisle, and there's the lion and the, the different clothes of just high quality. Mm -hmm. And um, he offers them to you. and can take as much as you want. And you said, I need a mirror. And you look at yourself in the mirror. When I got to that part reading it, what did you feel when that moment happened? I was excited. First of all, the mirror told me the whole story. How? How did the mirror tell you the I whole story? I seen me like I was. Yeah. And it didn't need to change because it looked okay the way it was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's beautiful. So the, that's the cool thing is like, you know, you've, you, you've gone through a lot of life mm -hmm. and a lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And yet today you can say, uh, I am sound of soul. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Well, what about this, Jeanette? Let's kind of change this focus a little. Okay. There are people that are going to watch this show later or even watching right now. What would you tell the young women or the even older women out there, what would you say to encourage them based on what you experienced in this story? Like, how would you speak life to them? You need to hang in there because this isn't the end. And think what you might be able to do for someone else that even you hadn't thought about. The more you see that individual in the, around them, then you're thinking, hey, I know what I can do for that person, or I know what they need to do. They need they need a little help, and this grandma can sure help. <laughs> I love it. This is beautiful. Uh, one thing I love about it is that there's, there's such beauty out of your soul that's emanating, and, and I love the delight that you were bringing here. Oh my goodness! So. Everybody, if you have any more comments, please go ahead and share them. Ask some questions. Well, um, and then uh, it, I also remember in your story that had to do with the reunion. Does that resonate in any way with you at all? It, it is either symbolically or even in, in the natural. Like, what would that say to you? We, uh, <clears throat> they, we had a lot of reunions. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it was people that I either hadn't seen before or got to see again mm. and could be a part of their life. I never wanted to let anyone go without being a good friend to them. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I needed their friend. Mm -hmm. So you don't ever give up. You just hang in there. Wow. And... Um, 
so at the end of the story, it talked about that after you got your new clothing, you were able to help others mm -hmm. uh, get their own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would that look like for you today? Well, I still enjoy doing it. The actual clothing. Yeah. 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 Or I can remember as a kid, mom didn't want me to have a certain outfit because of the color of my hair. Mm. Well, that's not fair. Let's remember there is some there is some ways to kind of transfer some of this mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. So you gotta hang in there and keep keep plugging away. <laughs> keep plugging away because it'll come out. It'll come true. Wow. That's good. Wow, beautiful. And, um, oh no, we're lost. Oh, the camera's frozen. Oh, no. That might be for a reason. Okay, so we're back here again. I don't know what time the camera froze, so we're going to use this camera here, all right? So we got the little bit of lens here. Um, thanks, guys, for sticking around when the camera froze. Uh, so we're using the laptop right now. Um, everybody in the chat, can you, are we still on the air? Can you let me know if we're still here? Well, um, Jeanette... We're kind of wrapping it up tonight right now. Okay, yes. And um, I was wondering, what has happened to you tonight with your story? You have to stop and look at the whole picture. Because there might be something else that's lacking that I haven't done or could do. Someone needs help. Um, a word of encouragement mm -hmm. and you sure can't go wrong with words of encouragement mm -hmm. so you kind of got to watch that too mm, thank you That's and great. you got to be there when you're needed yeah it don't hurt to step into the plate and mm -hmm. help bat do some, do some things that maybe even they didn't under quite understand but you, you just hang in there that's good. Thank you. Uh, so we're back, they said. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for um, sharing your heart with me and the audience tonight. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, if you were to tell someone who's never heard of prophetic storytelling, what would you say to them and how, to explain it? And then would you encourage others uh, to get their own? Oh, yes. This was fun. This was fun. Maybe I should have done it sooner. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed this. Well, how would you describe it to someone who's never heard of it? Hang in there. <laughs> there is more to the story. <laughs> good. And you have a good person that's helping you with it as well, I'm sure. Yeah. No, I. this I enjoyed. Oh, good. That was fun. And that lion, you betcha, <laughs> he's my buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. Great. Well, Jeanette, I want to thank you for letting me bless you with the prophetic story and speaking life and encouragement. And by the way, you spoke lots of life and encouragement to all of us today, too. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Great. It was well worth it. Awesome. Thank yeah. you very much. Well, everybody, I appreciate your time. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We had some hang-ups there. But I want to welcome you to our next broadcast coming up. Uh, we're usually on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. And uh, we're hopeful we have some openings in our calendars to get a prophetic story. So if you would like to get your own, you can go to legendsofthewind.com and go to our store and look for the product we call Become a Legend. And that way uh, you can uh, sign up and get uh, on our schedule. Uh, so everybody, thank you so much for participating and 
Mike, Alicia, Kylie, Gail, everybody watching, thank you so much for your involvement tonight. It was a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Great, I enjoyed great. It. Well, everybody, thanks for watching Legends of the Wind. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thank you. Good night.